We are continuing our series, Crime Without Punishment, that looks at the disturbing rise in unsolved murders in the U.S. Welcome back to CBS Mornings. Our investigation uncovered a troubling racial disparity. Murder cases are far less likely to be solved if the victim is Hispanic or black. Jackson, Mississippi has experienced a spike in killings, with more than 150 murders last year, and about 4 in 10 remain unsolved. Chief investigative correspondent Jim Maxerod went to Jackson to see the toll of unsolved murders on the relatives of those who have been killed. Jim, good morning. Good morning. There are the numbers and the pain behind the numbers. We traveled to Jackson last month to meet with a small group of mothers who'd lost their sons. What we found was a community seething with frustration that more isn't being done to track down the killers of their children. We also found an overwhelmed police department that says it can't possibly keep pace with the violence. Everyone in this room who has had a member of their family murdered, raise your hand. When we started calling mothers who'd lost their children to murder in Jackson, Mississippi, word got around and more than 30 people arrived for our interview. Put your hands up if you feel like you've had to investigate your own loved one's death. The pain in this room in Jackson was overwhelming. They didn't investigate my case. And more just kept coming, wanting their stories heard. Even the take when I talked to them, they hung the phone up in my face. Willie Mack is himself a former homicide detective at the Jackson Police Department. What an ambulance is! His daughter was shot to death in 2017. Hang on, how many years were you with Jackson PD? 24 years. You had 24 years in, and when you call the detective investigating your daughter's death, you don't get your calls returned? I don't get no call returned. To understand better the depth of their suffering, we sat down with three mothers from the group. My son, his name is Kellen Thompson, Jr. He was murdered April the 1st, 2021. Zachary Ryan Robinson. He was murdered on April 29th of 2014. Ryan, he was murdered November 26, 2020 on Thanksgiving, a day after my birthday. Margie Allen, Danita Williams, and Lucinda Wade Robinson are talking about their sons, all younger than 22, all gunned down in the city of Jackson, Mississippi. Population, 153,000. Has there been any arrest made in either of these three cases? No. No. Mm -mm. Not one arrest? I was showed a picture of my baby on the side of the road. I was showed some information, and I was told to go solve my own crime. Go solve your own crime? And bring them the evidence, and I would take it to them. In Jackson, the capital of Mississippi, the numbers are stunning. 156 homicides last year one of the highest per capita homicide rates in the entire country. Do you feel murder is being treated differently here? Murder is at the bottom of the totem pole. It's normal. A young black male is going to die tomorrow. We have three over the weekend. We can't get to you right now. The whole system is backlog. James Davis is the chief of the Jackson Police Department. Does not solving homicide cases erode the trust the community has in the police department. Well, of course, we tell these, these citizens the truth. We don't tell them that we can solve a case without the facts, you know? Chief Davis told us Jackson PD's ability to solve murder cases depends on processing evidence at the state crime lab, which he says is overwhelmed. I can use more police officers. I could use more homicide detectives. But if the state is backed up, the court is backed up, we will still have the same problem by developing these cases that we're already doing. FBI research suggests homicide detectives should oversee no more than five cases per year. Jackson PD has eight full-time detectives. That's enough for 40 murder investigations. Last year alone, they had nearly four times that number. I don't think any police department in the nation can say that they got enough resources. Jackson homicide detective Sergeant Kevin Nash works in an office where each desk is piled high with files. He knows that means victims' relatives aren't going to like the pace of solving their loved one's murder. Sergeant Nash, I talked to him, and he said, uh, well, you know, a lot, of mom, a lot of y'all come down here and act like y'all children are perfect. 
I said no. I said, first of all, I'm not acting like my child is perfect, but my child did not deserve to be human. killed in the street. But Sergeant Nash says he and his colleagues are doing the best they can. Let me be honest with you, when your loved one is killed, you can never do enough to solve that case. I call them back when I'm available. It may not be right then when they want to. And remember, if this was your child, you want immediate answers too. I will always tell you that the Jackson Police Department can do a better job. Jackson Mayor Shokwe Antar Lumumba knows all too well what unsolved crime can do to a family. And my brother was shot in the head in Jackson, Mississippi. So we're no friend of crime, right? And no one was ever arrested for that. But points out his police department makes arrests in six out of ten cases above the national average. I get the feeling no matter how often you talk about it, the tears don't stop. No, mm -mm. no. You just lay in bed no. at night I and do. just cry all night and you get up and try to fight more to get justice for your child. Mm -hmm. It's too much. Well, it turns out that three weeks after we visited, Jackson police made arrests in the case of Margie Allen's son a year and a half after his murder. Jackson PD told us it was a long investigation and they just kept following the leads. Now, tomorrow, we'll bring you our third story in the series, which takes us to Baltimore and focus on possible solutions to help police solve more murder cases. The pain is palpable. You can feel it on the screen. Just the fact that one mother would say murder is normal here. It is among the highest per capita uh, homicide rates in the country. The ballroom where these people spoke with us was one of the more um, uh, emotionally riveting, mm. powerful places I've ever yeah. been. We invited just a few, and they just kept, kept coming. coming. But just the fact that the mother said that the police said, go find, go solve it yourself and bring us the evidence. You know, What's wrong with that, Jim? Or Mr. Willie Mack, who's a former yeah. detective. I get that you're overwhelmed, back. but as a grieving mother, nobody wants to hear that. Go solve it yourself. So when we put that question to the detectives, they said, look, the numbers are what they are. These guidelines say we should have five cases. We have four times four, that number. Yeah. We're drinking water from a fire hose here, yeah. and we're doing the best we can. Feel for those families. Yeah. I do too. We that do. weight, it, it lasts forever on top of it. And, and based on what you said, it's also overwhelming for the police. So it's not just that they don't want to do it or that right. they're callous. Right. You're saying it's more of a problem they don't have enough resources, resources. to do it. So two days of demonstrating problems tomorrow, a solution okay. pegged exactly at that. Looking right. forward to that. Great job. Thank you very much as always. We appreciate it.